What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna start checking out Fluent, the hard surface modeling tool that you can use in order to really quickly improve your hard surface modeling skills. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find this tool on Blender Market. I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that it is a paid product. Um, there's two options in here. There's an option for the add-on itself and then there's an option in here that also contains some additional tools like the plate and wire and pipe tools. Um, I've done a video about the grid tools before. So that second one is going to add um, several additional tools that you can use inside of Blender. So you can go to this page and see more about those different things. But I kind of wanted to do a series talking about how to use these different tools inside of this uh, hard surface modeling tool. So um, first things first, when you first start off, and you enable the add-on, so you install it, there's gonna be a window in here, or a um, there's gonna be a set of options in here that you can use in order to adjust your shortcuts, as well as an online documentation page. So if you ever have any questions about how anything works, you can click on the button right there, and it's gonna open up this page with the actual documentation itself. So this is gonna go through all of the tools in a lot more detail than I'm gonna be able to hit in this series. So if you need more information, you can check that out here. This is actually a really cool. Um, this is actually a really cool image that actually shows you which tools were used in order to create which parts of this. Um, but for right now, what we want to do is let's take a look at this tool in general, and then we can get more in depth in the future. So to start off, to activate Fluent, notice there's some other things in here as well, like adjusting your default bevel resolutions and other things that we can talk about a little bit later. But for now, let's talk about how to activate this tool. So once you install this tool, you can activate it by tapping the F key on your keyboard. So notice how the F key is going to pop up all of these different options in here. Don't hold the F key down, by the way, just tap it when you do this. And so there's a number of different tools in here. So there's some stuff having to do with the way that your display looks. There's your tools in here for actually interacting with your solid objects. So that's where you're gonna do like your cuts and your slices, other things like that. There's tools down below for either adding a bevel to a shape. Um, these are the tools that come with the power trip, which is the, uh, the more expensive of the two options down below. And then there's also tools over here on the right hand side where you can actually make adjustments to things you've done in the past. So to start off with this tool, the way that you do this is you just tap the F key and then you pick what you want to do. So let's say for example that I wanted to remove some material from this object. Well, let's do the cut or add. So all I have to do in order to do that is first of all, I have to select an object. Then we can click on cut and add. And so notice how you get a tool set over here on the left hand side that gives you different options. So you've got your options for your shape. So you can adjust those by tapping different keys on your keyboard, as well as keys down below that act as kind of like modifiers, right? Or they give you more information. So for example, if I right click on this face, you can see how this will draw a grid and you can actually adjust the grid um, on this object. So you can adjust things like resolution and it's actually gonna snap to these objects. So if you wanna use the grid, you can do that. But um, in general, what this does is this allows you to draw on an object. So if I mouse over this and then click and drag, notice what this is doing is this is drawing a box. If I let up on this or if I click again, then I move my mouse down, notice what this is doing is this is creating a Boolean object in here that's actually cutting into my object. So when I do this, now you can see how this is used that object in order to cut into this other object. And it's automatically beveling this. There's some adjustments you can do with that. I'm not gonna worry about them too much for right now. But one of the cool things about this is if you click and hold your left mouse button, you get a number of different tools. Well, what those tools do is they allow you to adjust your objects as you're working with them. So you haven't just created this object and then you're kind of stuck, right? Instead, you can click and let's say, for example, that you wanted this cut to appear on the other side as well. You can select the mirror option and then click on this in order to do that. So notice how you can use this in order to copy across different axes in order to really kind of adjust this as you're going. And so if I right click, I can get out of this, but notice how if I wanna get back into it, I can select one of these objects that I've added, tap the F key and then click on edit. 
in order to go back in there so that I can actually make some more changes. So notice how there's other things in here as well. So things like your first bevel allows you to set um, the thickness of your bevel by moving your mouse as well as your second bevel. So if I was to do that again, whoops. I can also quickly adjust that second bevel that's in here. So there's a lot of different things you can do in order to make these changes really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over and then let's go ahead and let's add a little bit more of an array. So I'm gonna click and hold my left mouse button and then we'll just set this. I can adjust my count. So I'm gonna select my green axis by clicking. And then I can adjust both the offset and the count just by moving my mouse. And so this contains a number of different tools that you can use in order to make changes. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to add a slice in here. So let's say I wanted to slice this object so that it's got maybe a little bit more detail in here. What I could do is I could click in order to put set this slice, then I can move my mouse down. So notice what that's doing is that's actually uh, creating a slice inside of my object. And you can do the same thing in here where you can adjust your bevels. So your first bevel and your second bevel in order to adjust the way that that's going to look. So you can use that in order to make that change. And then as well, there's other things you could do too. But let's say I just wanted to mirror this. It's really easy to create that mirror on my object. And then once you're done, you can just right click. And there's a ton of different, um, there's a ton of different settings in here. I'm not gonna get super in depth with all of them right now. I more just wanna give you an overview. But now I've got this object that's been created with the Boolean. Well, I can just create an inset as well. So let's say I want an inset down into this object. I can do that. And I can adjust the inset thickness as well, just by clicking and holding, I'm going in here and adjusting this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mirror that one as well so that it shows up on both sides. So that allows you to kind of adjust the shapes. You can also click on objects like this one, tap the F key and you can adjust the width of your bevel. So notice how as I adjust this bevel, you can see how the width of the bevel adjusts as I adjust the bevel width in here. So you can set this um, to really kind of whatever you want. All right, so in addition, there's also down below, um, these are the tools that come along if you get the Power Trip version of Fluent. And so this contains additional tools that you can use to model things like wires and pipes and grids, other things like that. Personally, for the additional $9, it feels like it's kind of worth it to get these tools, but that's kind of up to you. So things like if you want to add wiring, for example. So let's say we had a wire that went from this point to this point. We can add that using this tool and then you can also adjust it. So you can adjust things like the root strength. You can adjust things like the radius of the wire and the number of wires that are in here. You can also adjust the size of all of those wires if you add the multiple wires and adjust things like the twist as well. So quickly adding wiring is pretty easy using this tool. So the wire tool also supports other kinds of wires as well. So for example, you can add things like, you can add like a shielded cable like this. You can adjust like the radius of the shielding that goes on here. You can adjust the gap between those. It's very adjustable in the features that you can use here. So you can add chains with the wire function. If I was to click from here, to here, there's a chain option where you can adjust the offset with the number of links. So a number of different things you can do with that wire tool. So you can add a pipe just by selecting the pipe tool, then just kind of giving it two points between which the pipe is gonna go. So you can click and hold and you can adjust the path that that follows just by moving your mouse. So I'm gonna move my mouse right here. Well, notice how now I can adjust things like my root length, meaning how far off of this wall it's going to come, as well as things like your pipe radius, number of pipes, other things like that. So you can use this to quickly add piping to your models. And that actually gets a little bit more in depth. I'm pretty sure you can use this to add like your own objects as fittings and other things like that. If you guys are interested, we can talk more about that in a future video. So the plate tool allows you to add things like plating by thickening faces. So if I was to click on plate, 
right here. I can select faces that I want this plate to run along. So in this case, we'll just click right here in order to select this, hit the enter key, then you can use the solidify function to adjust how thick that plating is, as well as how beveled it is. But then once you've done that, and we're just gonna bevel this off a little bit more, you can use those same mirror functions in order to quickly mirror this all over your object. So you can use that to really quickly add plating. So you can also use the cloth panel tool to simulate cloth over a surface. So I could come in here and I could select individual surfaces, hit the enter key, and that's going to simulate this as cloth. Notice how what this is doing is this is actually creating this, um, this is actually creating this as its own geometry. So you could also come in here if you wanted to and in, you can adjust all the simulation settings. So you could set it so each individual face is a piece of cloth as well. So if you were to click on this, just like this, and you can click on okay. And then let's run it again. So if I wanted to set up a cloth panel over here, now it'll simulate each face as an individual cloth panel. So you see how it's going through and it's doing that. And so obviously there's a lot more you can do with this. I'm not super detailed with it right now, um, but you can use this in order to simulate cloth across certain different surfaces. And then finally, um, and I think this is probably one of my favorite tools in here is the grid tool. So let's say we were to cut an opening on this face. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle across here, click, and then cut this back. But what we can do is I'm gonna right click, then I'm just gonna go into my grid settings. What my grid settings are gonna do is they're gonna allow me to draw a grid across this face. And so what we wanna do is we want to show the Boolean objects that are in here, and then we wanna select this one right here. So we wanna select the Boolean that it's using in order to create this. Well then, within the grid settings, you can click and hold and you can select different kinds of grids to place inside of this opening. So notice if I move my mouse down, I can use this to quickly add a grid in here. So we can position it so that it's further in or out in here. You can also adjust the solidification of the grid as well. So this is a quick, easy way to add grids inside of openings that you create inside of Fluent. So that's kind of a quick run through of the tools contained inside of Fluent. Obviously, we could get a lot more in depth with each one of these. Um, if you're interested, I'm planning on going through and making more detailed tutorials about some of the different functions in here, but I'd love to hear what you're interested in seeing more of in the comments down below. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.